Hi, and in this short video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of the crises that Harold Wilson has to deal with, certainly on an economic perspective, and that's devaluation of the pound in 1967. OK, so devaluation of the pound 1967, Harold Wilson, some people would say it's one of his biggest mistakes. It's something he's well known for. Um, a huge speech or certainly a significant speech he makes at that time on television talking about the pound in your pocket is all linked with this. It is something you need to know and it is something that certainly will be linking to other topics if we see an exam question about Wilson and about the Labour government 1964 to 1967. So before we go any further I think it's worth you understanding the two key ways that Wilson and the Labour Party can control the economy when they take power in 1964. And we've got deflation and we've got devaluation. So they're both gonna pop up in the screen in front of you now and then we can talk through each one of those in a little bit of detail. So deflation, this is where, this would support sterling, it prevents inflation, but it's that idea that it's a continuation of the stop go economic policies of the 1950s. And a lot of industry haven't really bought into that idea of the stop go economic policy. It had sometimes meant it was difficult for industry to plan, the economy would be doing well, then it would suddenly stop. And it really wasn't great for the economy growing. And you'll have seen in previous videos how Britain was lagging behind other European countries and Western countries during that period. The other tool that Harold Wilson's got in his pocket now is devaluation devaluation of the pound. So it would help solve the balance of payments crisis. It would make exports cheaper. That means if something's made in Britain when it's sold abroad, it's going to be sold at a cheaper price. It makes it more attractive to people buying it overseas. However, um, there would be a statement to Britain's economic weakness that if you devalue the pound, you're basically sending a message out that you feel that the British economy is weak. And the Labour Party had devalued the pound in 1949. Attlee had done that. And Wilson is really keen that the Labour Party are not known as the party of devaluation. So you've got those two basic tools for Wilson to control the economy. Now, something I referred to there was the balance of payments deficit. That's the difference between how much Britain sells overseas and how much it imports. And when um, Wilson takes over the economy or takes over power, it's Callaghan who's the Chancellor. But when Wilson takes over as Prime Minister in 1964, you find that Britain is in a huge amount of debt uh, to the tune of almost £800 million, £744 million in debt. And Wilson has got to get rid of that debt somehow because that's really going to hold Britain back. It is not something you want as a government. And you'll see that I've brought up the balance of payments figures, taking you all the way through from 1963 down to 1969. And you see how those figures change. And if you have a look particularly, 1966, he's doing OK. We're on minus 48 um, million in debt. And then 67, it jumps back up again. 461, 68, we're at 398. All of this deficit none of this good. Now you've got to accept there are things happening in the world during this time that Wilson cannot control, such as the Middle East crisis. You've got war happening over there. That's causing issues with oil prices. That's going to increase the balance of payments deficit. So there are lots of things happening that Wilson could not control. However, there are certain things Wilson can control. One of those could be that if he devalues the pound, it will really, really help solve the balance of payments deficit. So Wilson's got this decision that he's got to make. And again, I'm going to bring a slide up in front of you just to help you understand that and just to help you take some notes and crystallise in your own mind what we're facing here. So Wilson's got the issue 1964. He needs to solve this problem, the balance of payments deficit. Labour have already gone to the International Monetary Fund and taken a loan from them to try and relieve some pressure off the economy. Generally, when you take a loan off the International Monetary Fund, there will be a certain amount of things they will ask in return. For example, you increase tax, you come up with a way of how you're going to repay this money. So Wilson's doing all that kind of stuff. 
However, we get to a crisis point in 1967. We've got Middle East war taking place. We've got industrial action now starting to bite as well. None of this is helping the balance of payments crisis. And then in November of 1967, Wilson makes the decision of devaluing the pound by 14%. So you really need to know this. November 1967, Wilson devalues pound 14%. Okay, that's the kind of detail you've got to be dropping into your essays when you're writing them. And then we go into this speech that Wilson gives. He gives a television broadcast to the nation to explain what he has done. And I've brought that up in front of you and it's important that you read through this, okay? And he says, our decision attacks our problem at the root. Tonight we must face the new situation. First, what this means. From now on, the pound abroad is worth 14% or so less in terms of other currencies. That does not mean, of course, that the pound here in Britain, in your pocket or purse or in your bank, has been devalued. What it does mean is that we shall now be able to sell more goods abroad on a competitive basis. This is a tremendous opportunity for our exporters and for many who have not yet started to sell their goods overseas. But it will also mean that goods we buy from abroad will be dearer. And so for many of these goods, it will be cheaper to buy British. It's Harold Wilson, television broadcast 1967. It's very much known as the pound in your pocket speech. Wilson has spoken to the nation on television. He said that the pound's been devalued, but he's saying the pound in your pocket isn't worth any less. You can still go shopping with it. And there's a whole question here as to whether he was being truthful with people at that time. The reality is, if you were buying goods and they were from overseas, they were now going to be more expensive. And in reality, the pound in your pocket had lost some of its value. Want to have a look though at whether Wilson's done the right thing or whether he's done the wrong thing. And again, to help you, I've just broke this down into two simple columns. So let's have a look at, first of all, the idea that Wilson's done the right thing by devaluing the pound. So first of all, he's dealing with this idea of the balance of payments crisis. He's come up with a long-term solution to deal with this. Now, devaluing the pound, it will solve that problem. By taking a loan from the International Monetary Fund, it would have simply been a short-term solution. That's really not what he wants. He needs to fix the economy with the hope of winning the next general election and moving forward. And Wilson hand, Wilson's hand has been forced now. You could say that events in the Middle East, the war that's breaking out between Israel and the Arab nations, has pretty much meant that Wilson has no option due to the cost of oil, due to the industrial action. However, you've got to look at the counter-arguments. So we've looked at why Wilson's done the right, right thing. We now need to look at why he's done the wrong thing. And there we could say that Wilson's delayed this too long. He's been putting off a difficult decision. He should have done this in 1964. And Wilson, the cabinet, have really been discussing this and trying to weigh it up. Jim Callaghan, the chancellor, has been absolutely against devaluation. And Wilson wants to keep that cabinet together and therefore they have not devalued. It's also argued that by going on television, by making this broadcast to the nation, Wilson actually turns it into a crisis by doing that. If the Prime Minister appears on the TV speaking to the nation, clearly it's important, clearly it's serious, hence it's now become a crisis by the very fact Wilson's on television. And ultimately, as I've just said earlier, in Callaghan was against the idea. Soon as Wilson devalues the pound, Jim Callaghan, who had been Chancellor, resigns. He had said in the summer of 1967 that devaluation was not on the cards, it was not the right thing to do. Wilson's devalued, Callaghan resigns. So there are all the arguments to, to look at why it was the right thing to do and why it was the wrong thing to do. So having, having looked at the crisis, it's now really worth looking at what historians, what writers say about that period and their view of it. And first of all, what I'm going to go to is Pimlot's biography about Harold Wilson. Pimlot says, editors and columnists seized on the image of the homely image of the British housewife happily doing her shopping with the devalued, but not really devalued pound. Over the next few days, the bitter joke grew. In the House, Edward Heath turned it against a for once discomforted Prime Minister. The words, the pound in your pocket has not been devalued, which Wilson never said, 
did the Premier's already slim, slippery image limitless harm in subsequently inflationary years? So Pimlock's really now saying that by Wilson doing this, he's given Edward Heath a way in, a way of attacking Wilson in the House of Commons. That's what he means here when he says in the House. He's meaning in the House of Commons. So it's doing Wilson's image harm here, this idea of devaluing the pound, but it's not really devalued, but it is devalued. You get how Wilson's statement is actually contrary to the reality. So having looked at what Pimlock says, I want to move on now to Bernstein's book, The Myth of Decline. And he says, to make the devaluation effective, the new Chancellor of the Exchequer, Roy Jenkins, introduced a dose of inflationary measures far more severe than any that had been seen since the late 1940s, including substantial defence cuts, with an end to Britain's military commitments east of Suez by 1971. So if you remember at the beginning of this video, we talked about those two methods, that idea of deflationary measures or devaluation. And Bernstein's essentially saying here that whilst Wilson devalued the pound, it had to be accompanied by deflationary measures as well. It had to be using both of these levers to control the economy at the same time to have a real effect. You're also seeing here that Roy Jenkins has now taken over as Chancellor's the Exchequer from his position previously as Home Secretary. And also, what I want you to make clear now is you've got to make these connections. And Bernstein's showing you here, he's saying that don't only connect this with the economy now, look at how this is affecting foreign policy. Now Britain's having to make its decision to withdraw military bases from what's described as East of Suez. So we're looking out across Asia and we're having to draw back bases simply because we can't afford to maintain them. So Bernstein, in this simple, short piece, is allowing us to see how Wilson's decisions on the economy connect to wider political decisions for him. And then finally, we're going to look at Dominic Sandbrook and what he's got to say about Wilson and the devaluation of the pound. And Sandbrook says, perhaps the only way devaluation could have been averted in the life of the Wilson government is if, at the very beginning, Callaghan had imposed a really stern bout of deflation with much higher tax rises and much more and more severe spending cuts. So Sandbrook's saying here that Wilson had no option unless, as soon as Labour got into power, they put in higher taxes and they spent less money. And the reality is no political party when they get in power is going to want to do that because it's going to make them unappealing to the electorate when you come round to the next election. All the Conservative Party would have needed to do is say, you voted Labour in 1964 and look what happened. So Wilson really doesn't want to do that. But Sam Brooks saying that was his only option. But Wilson's avoided it. So the question that I really want to end this on is looking at why Wilson didn't devalue the pound in 1964. And I've put a slide up just to go through the key four points for us. Now, first of all, devaluation would have linked Wilson's government to devaluation in 1949. Don't forget, Wilson wants to avoid making that link. He doesn't want Labour to be known as the party of devaluation. It would have given the Conservative Party an in, it would have allowed them to be critical of Labour, highlighting the fact that they've just got in power and now they've devalued the pound. The reality is though, when Wilson did it in 1967, it still gave the Conservative Party an opportunity to be critical of Wilson. And also, Wilson's accepting that for devaluation to be effective, it would have meant wider spending cuts and it would have meant breaking manifesto promises very early in Labour's government and they didn't want to do that. And finally, Wilson's own position, his attitude is entrenched. By that I mean he's not willing to move his position. He's decided he's against devaluation and nothing will change his mind. So was it a missed opportunity? Should Wilson have devalued in 1964, bitten the bullet, accepted it and moved on? Well, first of all, Wilson could have said, well, I've just taken over here, I'm the Prime Minister and we need to do this. It is normal economic adjustment when a new government takes over, they have to adjust the economy for the situation they find and almost blame the Conservatives for it. 
If Wilson had done it earlier, if Wilson had devalued the pound earlier, there is a strong argument to say they would have benefited more from later economic improvements, which were global. And finally, you have to accept that it was the Middle East, it was industrial action, it was a wider situation that's making this problem worse. If Wilson had devalued in 1964, he could have avoided the issues that surrounded the industrial action and war in the Middle East. So there it is. It is a very short run through Wilson and devaluing the pound. In the description underneath the video, I've dropped in a link for the Commons Archives, which goes through some of the speeches were made at that time, and also the National Archives, which go through this period as well. Well worth a read for that little bit of wider reading to help on your work. Thanks very much.